Let's kick this course off right. This is chapter one and the first in a series of micro lectures in which I emphasize a, a highlight or two from, from each chapter and talk through those. This is our textbook, um, one, of the, one of the best ones I've seen on behavioral methodology and research. So I'm glad that we're using it in this course. Um, it is so important to be conversant in research for a number of reasons, and that's one of the one of the goals of this course. In addition to the in, to the college's um, values of of us being educated citizens and conversant in our in our disciplines and, and just just good citizens in general, um, as practitioners, we need to understand research, where it comes from, and the value of of doing it and how good research can bridge that divide between theory and practice, um, especially in healthcare where we talk a lot about evidence-based practice. The evidence comes from these types of research studies, um, whether they're published and developed into theories or not. Um, we live in a society where we are surrounded by data collection. You can't go to Walgreens without um, and buy a box of hot tamales without receiving a survey. Um, to comment on your experience. Um, Walgreens uses that for maybe product and market development, but also for performance appraisal of stores and, and personnel within them. Um, take your family to Red Robin for, a, for a, a guacamole cheeseburger or something, and we receive a survey. How was your experience? Did the wait staff take care of you? How was the food? Um, so we're surrounded by this, this data collection. Even in college and university, you receive surveys um, after courses, after certain experiences. Um, um, you provide uh, assignments and assessments and receive feedback, um, average scores, grades, um, exit surveys after graduation, and alumni surveys following up to see where you're at five years from now. Um, these are all data collection efforts towards a point of studying and, and doing research. Um, you look at a company like Facebook and look at the billions and billions and billions of dollars they make, it's not because we're paying subscriptions to be on Facebook, it's because they're selling our behavior, the stuff that we do while we're online, not on an individual level, but by demographic. How do men tend to behave on in social media? How do women tend to behave? How do people in different age groups tend to behave? So this, this need to be conversant in research, and I keep using that term conversant, to really understand research and to question, be critical consumers of research, really question research studies that we hear about on the news, that we read about, or even that we see in these journal articles in the courses that we take. Um, we shouldn't just blindly accept that because it's been put into print. Um, there are limitations, and understanding those limitations and the consequences of them are very important. Now in this course, we're going to talk about four goals of behavioral science and behavioral research. It's to describe behavior, to try to predict behavior based on what we know of the descriptions, determine causes of behavior, which is which comes first, you know, life satisfaction and, and career performance or career performance and life satisfaction. We don't know which one comes first. We're still developing methods to explore that, but it's an important thing to consider. And then the last is to explain behavior. Why do people act the way they do? What are their motives? How do their um, cognitive beliefs come into play? How do their affective emotions come into play, and how do those things affect behavior? It's really the ABCs of behavioral research, affect, cognitions, and behavior. So there's a quick introduction to the importance of the course. I encourage you to read chapter one thoroughly. Um, reach out to me with questions um, about this, about this micro lecture, about the readings about any of the supplemental work about the Andy Wakefield fraud thing or the Stanley Milgram experiments and the ethics of that. Um, just always feel that you can reach out to me for help. And as you work on the first homework assignment and take the first exam, let me know how you're doing and how I can support your success.